Howdy all. Today I just wanted to talk a little bit about my Fury X uh, setup in Crossfire um, and about my rig in general. Um, but uh, I was inspired to do this because I just found out a really cool feature of the, the Fury X, which I've had the Fury X for a few months now, um, or I just got a second one recently, but I only just discovered this uh, cool little trick. Um, but anyway, so I've got myself a 6700K uh, CPU overclocked to 4.6 gigahertz, and I've got myself one of uh, these thermal take. Uh, uh, well, this isn't actually the uh, RGB edition I put in another computer, but it's the same thing without the RB RGB because I haven't cared too much about the flashy lights. Um, and I've configured this in a push-pull setup. So uh, that's uh, right up the top there. Three fans on the bottom and another three on the top. So well, I can actually open this uh, up and show it off. And there's the other three pulling it up. So I've got, as you see, the, the two Fury X, I've got push-pull configuration for both of those radiators as well, and uh, unfortunately I don't have matching fans, so I've just got a, a spare uh, one with an L a yellow LED um, from another build. Um, I intend to replace that with uh, a Fantex one, same as the one up the top there, um, so they're both uh, white as far as um, the outside aesthetics go and match um, and this is all this is all using it's got this transparent uh, cover so everything here is, is visible anyway uh, so the thing I wanted to to show off about um, well I'll talk a bit about the Fury X why I like the dual uh, to Fury X setup. Um, the advantage for me right now is uh, the better free software drivers for GNU Linux. That's the primary reason for buying it. Um, if you are happy to run Mesa um, from, uh, compiled from Git, um, you can get um, really fast free software drivers that work great with these cards. Um, the only uh, well, problem is that there's no real crossfire support in Mesa right now, so the second card seems kind of redundant, but um, they're coming out with Vulkan games, and uh, Vulkan allows you to easily, well, I don't know how easily since I'm not a, a, Vulk a, I'm not a game developer, but in theory uh, it'll allow game developers to be able to target multiple graphics cards um, without having to have um, driver-specific um, support. They don't need to worry about adding it to AMD GPU and Mesa um, like they did with the, uh, the old Catalyst drivers. And But um, the other cool thing about the, the Fury X is um, it's compatible with pretty much all the GNU Linux drivers. It's compatible with FGLRX, it's compatible with the free software AMD GPU, and it's compatible with the AMD GPU Pro stack from AMD. So uh, if one of those ones happens to work best in your game, Fury X is going to support it. Whereas if you get the R9 480s or anything that newer than a Fury X basically, um, you're not going to be able to run the, the FGL RX stack, which uh, might be a problem. It's it's looking like increasingly like um, FGL RX is, is not going to be terribly useful going forward, especially when AMD GPU gets free sync support, hopefully not too far off. <laughs> um, but the free, uh, there's there's still a couple of games that work better on FGLRX in my experience. Um, one of those being Dying Light. Dying Light just doesn't run with um, Messer right now, and it doesn't quite perform as well as it does um, with FGLRX under the AMD GPU Pro setup. So I actually have a triple boot setup. I've got 16. Ubuntu 16.04 with uh, AMD GPU Pro. I've got 14.04, um, Ubuntu 14.04 with FGLRX, the latest catalyst that they released. And I have um, 
Debian with the Mesa drivers, which I compiled from Git. And I also compiled the, the latest uh, kernel from the stable series, the latest RC, whatever. Um, so at the moment, I think that's 4.8-RC4. Uh, so uh, anyway, the one cool thing that I've uh, just found out about um, this this um, card is that uh, my spouse doesn't actually appreciate the, the red LEDs, uh, really hates uh, looking at red LEDs. And you can actually turn them off, not the logo, but you can turn these ones off at least. Um, or you can change the color, which isn't documented anywhere. Um, so I'll have a, I'll show you what the um, the box of these cards looks like. Well, firstly, so at first I had the Gigabyte card, and I really wanted. To, I didn't really like Gigabyte. Uh, I, I I still don't like Gigabyte to be honest. I find them to be really cheap. They don't. They have the worst GNU Linux support of um, all the major vendors, as far as I can tell. Um, but they were also the cheapest in this particular instance. So, um, uh, and, and that was uh, back a few months ago. Um, now, the second card I've got here is an Asus, and the Asus one um, was uh, pretty cheap. Uh, it, it dropped so much that I thought, well, I'd be crazy not to get a second one while they're still um, in the market because I don't think these cards are going to be around too much longer since AMD is gearing up for their next generation high-end graphics cards, whatever comes out. Like the 480 was the, the mid-range, then they're going to release the high-end stuff on the, the same architecture, probably with HBM like these um, graphics cards have. So when that comes out, there will really be no reason to keep the Fury X uh, on the shelves, I imagine. But... Um, Anyway, I'll show you the um, uh, the card was the second card was so cheap that I just figured I might as well get the um, the second one and and they looked like in the pictures that they would match. Um, now this is actually just a sticker Gigabyte's put on here. I can peel that off and I probably will peel that off eventually so they uh, aesthetically they look similar. The only real difference between the two cards um, is the location of the stickers and where they've put the stickers. Um, if we have a look at the um, the the gigabyte card you can't very well see it here but there is no sticker on that fan at all um, it just looks bare and it looks quite weird actually without the stickers um, especially when it's not spinning if we have a look at the one down here it's kind of hard to see but um, I think the camera is catching it um, you can see the Aces uh, logo on that particular fan so um, they don't fully, they don't quite match, but they they look close enough, and and this is because um, AMD has uh, basically just sold the cards as is. They teamed up with Cooler Master to make the the radiator and the liquid cooling uh, setup, um, and then that all went straight to the um, the companies like um, Gigabyte and ASUS, who just who basically threw it in a box, um, supported the card and uh, on their websites and such and and uh, sent them out to customers. So, um, let's have a look at the, the difference in boxes. This is the uh, Gigabyte box, and as you can see, it's, it's pretty much what you would expect. But it's a very big box. When we open it up, that's what you get. So it's got some screws for uh, mounting the radiator, uh, anti-static bag, that's where all the, the, the tubes went, and then here's where your radiator would go. And they've thrown in a CD, a warranty card, a quick guide, which really is, is quite generic. And that's all you get. Um, it looks very bare bones. Now, if we compare that to the Asus box, 
um, this looks far more aesthetically uh, pleasing to me. It's even got a little carry handle on the top, making it much easier to, to hold because it's, as I said, it's not exactly a small box. Um, everything about the box looks a bit nicer, but anyway, it's the what's in the box that counts, right? So, same sort of uh, foam setup, except I'm just going to move the camera a bit here. We've got an extra slot here. Um, and then in there, this thing was going there. So this contains speed, speed me up, uh, speed setup, uh, just some documentation, CDs. Um, it came with a, a little card, or which included a code for. Um, Warships, uh, uh, warship, uh, some warship game which I'm not really interested in, some MMORPG, some extra cabling in case you need to have an old style power supply that doesn't have the cables, and the mounting screws as well. So, so everything about the Aces looks a little bit nicer. And uh, I did buy the Aces a few months later, but it was much cheaper um, when I brought it. Um, now all these cards have, uh, well, actually, and actually I can't seem to find the Gigabyte for sale anymore. So um, it, it seems like Aces is well probably the only one that's uh, readily available, or at least at the at the cheap price points, um, which is um, I forgot the exact. Um, price, but the the price is basically almost half of what a 1080 costs. For I think it was about thirty dollars more or something thereabouts. Um, you can um, you can get two Fury X's instead of a 1080, which just seems crazy in my, in my opinion. Because if you have a look at some benchmarks like Ashes of the Singularity, um, the these Fury X cards are really pretty good. They're like, um, like second, um, uh, only to uh, 1080. They're, they're beating like 1070s and, and stuff in some benchmarks. In other benchmarks, they don't perform very good. Of course, Ashes is a singularity. That's one of the ones they perform much better in. But um, a lot of games they'll favor um, AMD or they'll favor Nvidia. Um, so uh, obviously, some cards are just gonna really suck. Uh, some games are really going to suck on this, but you know, nothing's going to be so bad as, um, like, oh, obviously these cards are far better than an RX 480, and, uh, and people, and that's like the latest card, all the games have to support at least that, so, um, it's, it's not going to be a problem for, um, any of the games on the market right now, even, even if it was really poorly supported. Anyway, back to the LEDs. Now, I've got a little um, bicycle light, which uh, is very helpful in this dark in environment here, but uh, actually I'll see if I can change the lighting a little bit if that's helped. All right, now you'll see just in there, I'm just gonna have to lock this uh, a bit more, there we go. It's kind of hard to get the camera in here and the LED and the screwdriver all at the same time, but I'll do my best. Uh, okay. Right here. Is that visible? It's visible if I go under the radiator. There we go. Okay, so here there's two little switches. Um, this one's on uh, number by default, 
one is off and two is on. Now if I flick to to the off position and there we go. We can't adjust the LEDs here but the LEDs here are now switched off. And if I change the other switch to be on, so number one is on only, how about that? We've got blue LEDs. Pretty cool, huh? And now if I turn both of them on, It's kind of got a purple taint to it. It still looks more blue than purple to me, but you know, it's definitely got a bit of red. And it looks like blue and red together, so yeah, slightly purplish. Maybe it'll look more purple in night. I literally only found out about this a few minutes ago and I just had to show it off. <laughs> but back to red for me because uh, everything else in my case is red. Even the case itself is red. So, so that's pretty cool. Um, now one of the issues with the AMD GPU uh, and AMD GPU Pro drivers is that it doesn't have um, support for, like normally these LEDs they will, um, they will like, only have one when it's not being used much and they'll spin up to full when it's under max power um, when it's fully being utilized and I can show that off here if I just uh, reboot my computer which is currently in Debian right now oh, that's one of the issues with this kernel that I'm using AMD GPU does seem to uh, have some issues sometimes it will just crash when I'm shutting down <sighs> hoping they'll fix that soon it's there's a bug open on freedesktop.org so they know about it they're working on it anyway it's uh, booting it's into the bias right now Booting up, and here we go. So, the computer's just booted. See, one card's basically not doing anything, so it's just green, and the LEDs turned off. The other card's on. And when I log in, fire up something like Far Cry Primal just uh, loading All right, the game is just starting up. So I'm still on the intro screen. Go to the benchmark. 
And there we go. Very nice. So you get that immediate visual feedback that crossfire fire is actually working, or at least both the GPUs are in uh, in use, which uh, is is very handy, especially when you're trying to troubleshoot um, issues. I can see um, under FGLRX when I'm trying to use crossfire that sometimes it's just not um, working quite right, um, and I can just immediately see. Okay, it's an issue with the GPU. Uh, it's not using the other card. And, uh... Yeah, it's all looking pretty neat. So, in this particular test, we've got... which is maximum frames per second, 101. Went down to a minimum of 52 frames per second. So it's reasonable, I think. Um, I find that, as of late, anything under about uh, 40 frames per second, I'm kind of, eh, that's really not acceptable, um, considering how much power I've got here. Um, but uh, 52 frames per second minimum, that's, I'm pretty happy with that. I've got a FreeSync monitor as well, so um, there's no tearing or anything. Everything's working quite nicely here under Windows. I'm hoping that uh, we'll get similar performance and similar uh, advantages under GNU Linux soon when we've got, again, FreeSync supported under uh, AMD GPU. Shouldn't be too far away. Hopefully sometime early 2017. And uh, the other thing is Vulkan support. Vulkan in more games. We've got games like the Talos Principle right now, which are trying to, to work with Vulkan. Um, they don't seem to really support multiple GPUs at the moment. Um, I've tested it. Um, it didn't seem to make much of a difference. Um, I can see the second graphics card's not doing anything, and you can immediately see that here. <laughs> but, unfortunately, um, uh, well, it's still early days. It still says it's in beta. So, we'll just have to wait and see how that plays out. Even under Windows, some games won't take advantage of um, these dual GPUs. If I have a look at um, Doom, for example, um, even when I select um, Vulkan instead of OpenGL, it still won't use the second graphics card, which is quite a shame. Um, but as you can see, games like Far Cry work beautifully. So, yeah, that's a, a little bit about my, my setup. Um, I haven't overclocked these cards yet. Um, I don't know if I've got the need to yet. Um, but I'm sure maybe a year down the track or a couple of years down the track when this st is starting to, to get a bit uh, long in the tooth, then I'll definitely look to overclock and squeeze a little bit more performance out of it. Right now, I just don't need to worry about uh, risking, risking shortening the life of it just for a little bit extra. CPU, I'm not too worried about. I've never had the CPU die, and as you can see, I've got incredible cooling on it. Um, you can actually see, um, perhaps, right underneath um, the temperature of my CPU. So again, overclocked to 4.6 gigahertz, and I'm running Far Cry. Um, the benchmark is, tool is still open, and that's only running at, well, just around 40 degrees. So for given that's about as far as it's ever getting pushed, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, and it's already past winter, so... Um, yeah, it'll obviously get a little bit hotter in summer, but yeah, it's it's well within safety limits. So I'm um, yeah, very very impressed. Um, so about this whole setup, um, that's really the only issue is getting um, uh, Vulkan support with the second graphics card. Um, that's just not there yet. Hopefully, it will be really soon. Um, the only other issue. I have with this is, um, as I pointed out in the in another video, the issue with the um, the MSI um, uh, UEFI not supporting booting into uh, Refined properly. Um, another issue is lack of USB ports. Um, there's just well, let's see. We've got two up the top for the keyboard and mouse, um, and then oops. Yeah. Um, 
and then we've got another four ports here but the four ports are well one of them is one of those new type C connectors and I've got nothing type C and the other ports you see there um, are mostly there's one other USB port I can use and the rest are just um, for display ports or HDMI ports for the integrated graphics um, they take up a lot of the room now there is some case, some ports at the top of the case um, that's all hooked up um, but uh, it's definitely not as convenient to get to as the back of my case considering where I've positioned everything um, uh, what else uh, oh yeah the, the front of the case um, is it requires it this is the uh, the, the Fantex requires a lot of power to that uh, force to pull the front off as is the is as um, is the case with a lot of these uh, uh, type of computer cases but um, unfortunately this one happens to have a little um, wire on the front um, which connects the, the front LEDs it's a very fragile wire and um, I broke it off because I forgot to disconnect it one time um, I, I do a lot of my work on upgrading my rig um, after work when it, the lighting here is not very good there's not a lot of space and I just didn't see that little cable so when I used so much force to pull the front off um, it just ripped the cable right out of the um, the little circuit board I'm gonna have to solder it back in which is kind of annoying but fortunately it looks like it won't be too difficult to do um, that's uh, that's uh, I also used to have um, additional fans down the bottom of the case um, here and there um, but since this radiator is uh, so low to the to the ground um, it and it won't fit the other way um, those fans no longer fit in that location so I have to take all those out which is a, a little unfortunate but that's a minor detail really um, a bigger problem probably is um, I've got so much room for hard drives in this case, but so little connect, so few connectors to actually hook them up with. Um, I'm not sure if you can see in the back here, but there's um, there's room. There's I think six serial ATA connectors here, um, but I can't use any more. I can't use all of them. I've got um, one on optical drive, I've got two um, two and a half inch SSDs at the back and I've got one three and a half inch six terabyte where I keep the bulk of my games just because um, I've got so many games um, but uh, I also have two M.2 drives one with running Windows, one running Debian and um, it's it, it just doesn't leave any room for anything else that I might want to experiment with um, because even though I've got a couple um, serial ATA ports free um, the M.2 drives basically disable those you can't have um, serial ATA um, or um, what's the, you, you basically can't use those ports as well as M.2 which is uh, quite a shame um, now I could have went with the X99 platform and I would have got a lot more um, I.O. ports and uh, you know, that was very tempting but ultimately I wanted this to be for games and I wanted the, the quickest clock speeds since I know most games won't utilize all the cores I was a little concerned that by going with the um, Z170 platform um, since this is the MSI Z170A Gaming M7 that uh, having to run these cards at 8x um, PCI Express might uh, represent a bottleneck, some argue that it does um, I haven't noticed that I've on the games that do support Crossfire I've noticed a significant increase um, not double but um, in Far Cry for example um, I was getting on average about I think around 52 frames per second and now that's my minimum frames per second now I'm getting on average about 83 frames per second so an, a significant increase by adding the extra card but certainly not double but it doesn't look like um, the lack of 16x 
um, to 16x PCI Express um, lanes, uh, Express ports per, per card is, um, is actually hurting it in any significant way, which uh, is, is quite a relief. Um, so I think that's all I wanted to say. Just really wanted to show off the LEDs. Um, now there is there is the uh, extra switch here, which is supposed to be, as I understand it, for the BIOS um, in these particular cards. So you, you've got a dual BIOS setup. Um, I had no idea um, that was a thing when I got these cards. Well, as I said, a ASUS, um, Gigabyte, um, AMD. None of them has said anything about this, as far as I can tell. It's all just been left for users to, to figure out, which is amazing. Um, it's just, it's, you've got features on your card and you're not, you're not selling them. Why would you do that? I don't know. <laughs> um, anyway, so if you've got, uh, if, if you're tossing up between a 1080 or um, two Fury Xs, well, I think, uh, in my opinion, Especially if you're running GNU Linux, you've got to get the dual two Fury Xs. But um, uh, of course, a lot of people won't have the room in their case for two radiators like I do. If you want something smaller, um, it's uh, yeah, anything smaller than this case, you're going to be really struggling to fit that in. Unless you put the radiators at the front of the case, but then you're blowing in all the hot air over your motherboard, which you really don't want to do if you can help it. Um, I actually think that this whole setup with the, the two radiators like that, or well, the three really, I think it looks beautiful. But um, my spouse thinks it looks really ugly, so I guess um, it's all a matter of taste. Um, but uh, if you're somebody who doesn't like that setup, or you don't want to have to deal with all that, um, all, all that, then then obviously a 1080 is going to be a little bit easier. But on the flip side, one of the nice things about these cards is they're so short um, compared to most cards out there. Um, I think we're looking at, um, uh, my spouse was looking at the 1070 uh, Mini, which is a gigabyte card. Um, uh, uh, and it's supposed to be really short in length, as the name implies, but I don't think it was much different to a Fury X, um, minus the radiator, obviously. Um, and so when we've had a look at um, another card I had was the Asus uh, 285, um, uh, R9 285 uh, OC edition, which was the Asus Strix. And the, the Strix really sagged when you put it in the, the slot. Instead of being straight like this, it would like flop down because it was really long. I had to like take this whole panel out because this wouldn't fit, um, fortunately. Most things on the, the Fantax are, are removable, so it's not a problem, but you know, it didn't look quite um, as nice without that panel there. And and the, the thing was just on a horrible angle. It looked like it was, it looked like it was gonna like collapse or something. Now I've, I've read online um, about people trying to address this problem and people would be grabbing the power cables and trying to pull the card up by the power cables and other people had little cable ties wrapped around the, the, um, the power cables trying to pull it in the other direction and stuff. Um, and that's just crap that you'd have to do that on, on a card. Um, and unfortunately when you get the bigger cards, that's the real risk, uh, especially with the Strix apparently, um, which tend to be the faster of the bunch. But if you go for something shorter like this with the radiator, well, as you can see, they fit beautifully in the case. Um, very easy to install. Um, well, uh, it's, I mean, it's not, you don't need to worry about um, having all that extra room. As long as you can fit the radiators in, as long as you've got space for them, the actual PCI Express slots themselves, um, they fit really nicely, which I'm, I'm very happy with. This it looks far more aesthetically pleasing to my eyes than the 285 Strix which I originally had in here before I got the first Fury X. So yeah that's that's about it. If uh, anyone has any questions about any of this um, leave me comments uh, under the video. Uh, so, sorry I've um, uh, rambled on a lot but uh, you know anybody who's built their rig before they'll want to talk about it I'm sure. Um, you put a lot of time and money and effort into to building something like this um, 
it's uh, really a work of love and uh, you know obviously you, you, you're going to want to show it off so this is my version of that alright thanks all peace out